Yes, hello, welcome on to Living End Sports here for the One Season Challenge. This time we are with Schalke. If you missed yesterday's episode, go and have a look at it. You got a little squad introduction. I must admit, though, based on what you're going to see today, you might not really have had a proper squad introduction. Just the squad that we actually had, as well as a, a full introduction to the series as a whole, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, a new one season challenge. And we had off-season between last episode and now, and you can see that we've won all the games apart from one, which we had a draw, and we also have won in our uh, our first round of the, the, the German Cup, the, the Pokal. So, we've been doing not too bad, and we've made a few signings as well, which we'll get to in just a minute, and then we'll be playing up against Bayern Munich in the opening game of the league season. A nice, easy start to our league campaign. 8-0 Schalke lost to Bayern Munich in real life. As long as we don't lose by that much, I think we can claim it was a success. Before we have a look at our transfers though, please make sure and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got more daily Football Manager content Monday to Friday at 11am. And I hope you very much enjoy If you are enjoying this series, I say hit that subscribe button and you won't miss an episode. So let's go look at the transfers. We'll start with the outs. Some people I will probably only have fleetingly mentioned in yesterday's episode. And they won't be mentioned ever again after the next couple of minutes when I tell you who we've sold. So the first out we had, I think I mentioned this in yesterday's episode. He would probably go and use Benito Raman. He has went to Crystal Palace for five and a three quarter million pounds. We've ended up losing half the money we spent on him. To be honest, he just wasn't that good so the the winger slash forward is a way to play at crystal palace another player who's away is steven skrzybski one reason he's not staying is because i can't say his name another one is he's not particularly good he's away to mainz 1.6 million pounds we've uh, he's worth some for 1.3 to be honest wasn't that good we've lost money on him after they bought him a couple of years ago i don't care wasn't going to play for us not good enough certainly wouldn't get us into europe so away he goes Another attacking player, central midfielder as well as winger and attacking. He can play in a lot of positions, to be honest. Can Alessandro Schopf, and he is away to Hertha Berlin. Yeah, identifies himself as a defensive winger. £21,000 a week as a squad player. He was earning quite a lot of money. He's played here for quite a few years, but we sold him for £2.4 million. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, Nabil Bentaleb is away. We did not get a lot of money for him, only £2.8 million, but he was on £88,000 a week. So it's more important to get him off the wage bill than to bring in the actual money for him. So uh, so that's what we did. And that opened up quite a lot of money in the wage budget. And we had about £10 million of cash to spend. However, we haven't actually bought anybody. All of our signings are loans. I, I ended up kind of trying to work the system a little bit because when I think about it, I only need them for a year. So why would I buy them and waste wage budget on them when I could just waste wage budget on them? So that's exactly what I've done. And we've brought in quite a few. To be honest, the squad is quite small after we sold those players. So we brought in quite a few folk on loan. The first one being Buna Sar, the right back, uh, right wing back, right attacking midfielder from Bayern Munich, who obviously we play against today. He was just signed by Munich for, uh, for £9 million from Marseille. And now we've just loaned him straight out from there. Well, probably first or second choice will be a battle on that right-hand side between him and William. A nice, well-rounded player. Some nice, nice physical stats. He's all right. He'll be solid enough for us. We, we just need another option in there at right back. And he is one of those. Again, we've got to remember we haven't paid any money for these people. It's just the wages. And another one here is Jens Peter Hodge. Hog? Hodge? I'm not quite sure how I'm going to say his name. Again, was just signed by Milan. And now he's out on loan at us. So we're doing not bad by that. It's a nice well-rounded player. Lots of 12s, 13s, 14s in his statistics there. He's going to be a backup winger for us. We have wingers in our system. That's maybe a clue to what we're playing. We're not playing the, the Sheffield United way where we didn't have any wingers. We do have wingers in this uh, this this tactic we're going to use. Uh, but he is one that will come off the bench, can play either side. Uh, a very, very solid backup, I'd say. We've actually trained two different tactics and one of them we play with an attacking midfielder and that would be Franco Vasquez here. We've signed him in on loan from Sevilla. 
they signed him for £8.75 million several years ago. He's a very important member of the side and somehow we've managed to get him in on loan. So we're not going to complain. He's got some very good stats there, including dribbling and first touch, passing technique. He's a good playmaker up in that advanced uh, midfield role. 31 years old as the Argentine, so brings a bit of experience as well. I say when we play with that attacking midfielder, he plays there. He can also play centre mid if he needs to. He can play out wide, he can play up front. He's very, very versatile. Ideal bench player for us, I think. That's Franco Vasquez. We're now moving into players who'll probably be fighting for that first team role, if not already in the first team. And the first one of those is Daniel Amarty from Leicester City. They signed him several years ago, six and a half million pounds. Not really played much for them in the league since then. Had one big year in 16-17, but after that, hasn't really had many games. So he's joined us on loan, can cover a right back, all the way up that right side. In fact, centre back or up into midfield as well. A very versatile, well-rounded player. Got him in on loan. Again, lots of loan signings. I'm kind of working the system a little bit here for this one season challenge. So he's signed him in on loan. There's no limit for the number of loans you can bring in in the Bundesliga, which is... Very beneficial for us, I'll say that, because we're nowhere near finished yet. But Daniel Amarty, nice, well-rounded option at centre-half. Probably going to be a backup defender for us, but a solid, solid player. Moving slightly further forward, and we already have Kalasinac on loan from Arsenal, so why not bring in his friend, and that's Mohamed El Neni, who signed him in on loan from Arsenal. £50,000 a week we're paying him. He's very, very well-rounded, good physical stats, good teamwork, good work rate, defensively, He's very good as a kind of ball winning midfield. He can also play as a playmaker, but uh, either def defensive midfield or in central midfield, a more defensive minded midfielder is what we're looking for. And he is one of those. You can see he was initially uh, at Basel before going to Arsenal. He was on the Besiktas last year and he's now going to play for us and he's going to be one of our, our first choice central midfielders. That's Mohamed El Neni. An option out on the right hand side. He can also play on the left if he has to as well. Is Francisco Trincao. You can see he's got very nice dribbling, very nice first touch, nice technique. He's a very skillful player, perhaps could do with a little bit more speed. But a very skillful player, plays the inverted winger or inside forward on the right-hand side. Was at Braga for a long time. Uh, Barcelona just signed for £28 million and they've sent him out on loan to us. Could be a very, very good player for us off that right-hand side. I'm hoping for lots of goals, lots of assists from him. And in all competitive competitions, we've had one assist from him so far. He's not set the world alight. But I'm hoping he might be able to as we continue through. There are two more players to go, including this man here, Carlos Fernandez. We have him in on loan from Real San Sebastian, which is Real Sociedad and football manager, for anyone that doesn't know. And he is going to be our first choice striker. Realistically, it was Klaas Jan Huntelaar, who is our striker. And over the course of the last month since we started this save, he's dropped down from a three and a half star player to a two and a half star player. He's 37 years old. That's probably going to happen. So we needed to bring someone else in because Hintelar was our best player in that position. So we have brought in Carlos Fernandez. He can play at attacking midfield as well as a striker. He's going to play as a, a deep lying forward for us in the formation that we're going to play. He's only on £17,000 a week as well. Very, very nice, well-rounded. There's not many uh, single-digit stats there. Most of them are defensive ones. Finishes 15 I'm hoping he can score a lot of goals for us. He's already scored two goals and three starts for us during the preseason. So hopefully that can continue. And what's almost certainly the star man in the team here, we have signed on loan from Real Madrid, Vinicius Junior. Yes, the man who Real Madrid paid £40 million for a few seasons ago. He played 29 games for them last season. And we've got him in on loan Again, a very, very physically good player. Very, very fast. 16 pace, 17 acceleration. He's got good dribbling, good technique, skillful. And he's scored quite a few goals in preseason. He scored three goals for us, cutting in off that left-hand side. He can also play up front if we need him to as well. I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. He could be a little touch of magic, a bit of flair that we need to push us up the table. And hopefully he can be our star man. And this is the tactic we're going to go for. It's a kind of 5-2-3 sort of formation, maybe a 5-4-1, depending on what you want to call it. But this is what we're going to go with. Three centre-backs in front of the goalkeeper. So Farman's in goal. We're going to have Mustafi when he's fit, Sani and Nastasic. Nastasic? I'm going to go with Nastasic. I think that's how it's said, isn't it? Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Nastasic as the third centre-back. Mustafi, however, is still injured at the moment. 
So that means that uh, Daniel Amarte is going to get the game at the back for the moment. William will play at right wing back, but we've got Bunasar there who signed in on loan as an option uh, should should we need him. Kolasinac will start on the left. The midfield will be Elneny in a ball winning midfield role with uh, Suet Serdar as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Vinicius Jr. will cut him in off that left-hand side as an inside forward. Trincao will cut in as an uh, inside forward off that right-hand side. And Fernandez will act as a deep line forward. So he's going to drop more into this space here. These guys will come in as inside forwards, maybe more advanced than Fernandez. You'll get Kalasnach and William and the overlap. Serdar will push forward to help in here, and Elneny will set back. So really, you've got your three defenders who stay back with Elneny just screening in front of them. The, the, the wing backs really providing the width. Uh, Vinicius Jr. and Trincao being the more advanced players. Fernandez maybe dropping into this hole and Serdar coming up to meet him there. So it should be it should be a, a very fluid formation for us. Fingers crossed it does work. You see, we're playing a vertical tiki taka, so shorter pass, playing out defence. We're trying to get the ball into the box. You know, there's the options of underlaps and overlaps, um, however they, they want to do. A lower tempo, playing nice and narrow. Um, perhaps it's unusual when you're playing five of the back to play narrow, but we're strong in the middle of the park, so so I'm I'm looking to to keep the the players in there, especially when Vinicius comes in, as does does Trinquao. You've got lots of bodies in the middle, so so I'm happy to play narrow if we need to. We're going to be yeah a, a higher line and a, a higher line of engagement as well. We're going to prevent the short goalkeeper distribution. We're going to put some pressure on some teams and uh, and see how we do. You can see on the right hand side there. Of the 11 members of the team who will be starting today's game against uh, Bayern Munich, only one, two, three, four of the 11 are actually Schalke players. The rest are in on loan, and we do also have four players in on loan on the bench as well. If this was two seasons, this maybe wouldn't have been that great, but because it's just the one season, we can deal with it, and hopefully it can, uh, it can be very positive. So you can see there's no real area of weakness in the team there. Everyone's three or three and a half stars. Looks very solid. And hopefully we can push on with that. As I say, we have trained another tactic where we're playing attacking midfield and behind two strikers. But I think the one we're going to go with is this one here. Um, just to, to give a, a, a wee bit more kind of width. I know because we play narrow that sounds strange. But a little bit more width uh, and, and, and maybe provide some uh, some more some more danger, some more excitement. And maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Baron won't be too comfortable playing up against us in this opener. We will find out in just a moment as we progress through here. Select this team. You see, there's lots of players who say they aren't fit, but we will proceed to the match and uh, let's see how we get on against Bayern. And here's the Bayern team. You've got Neuer, you've got Kimmich, Pavard, Hernandez, Alaba, Goretzka, Tolizo, Muller, Douglas Costa, Sani and Lewandowski. It means at centre-back they're playing Pavard and Hernandez, who are technically two full-backs who can also play at centre-back. So maybe we can make uh, make some advantage of that, take advantage of that. Who knows? We are currently, obviously, because of alphabetical order in 14th in the division. But hopefully we can uh, maybe steal something away here in Munich and the game begins and we'll see how we get on 22 minutes on the clock this is the first highlight Douglas Costa and Muller and it's out to Kimmich on this right hand side for Bayern Lewandowski the ball back out to Kimmich what's he going to do he goes down the line back to Douglas Costa Goretzka Muller and Leroy Sané he tucks in the back post and it's only taking 23 minutes for Bayern Munich to get ahead there we've yet to have a shot in the game and I imagine this could be quite a long Friday night for the opening game. But there is a highlight straight from kickoff. Let's see if it can be a positive one for us. Amarte plays it forward. Hernandez clears it though. And Goretzka has it now. Into Muller. Muller comes out to this right hand side. Back to Goretzka. Out to Kimmich. There's an acres of space here. Douglas Costa into Muller. And it's two goals in the space of a minute for uh, for Bayern. And um, this this could be the floodgates opening, I think. Class Nash is getting dragged inside there trying to follow Costa. And we end up 2-0 down halfway through this first half. And there's a free kick. Douglas Costa takes it. It's gathered by Farman, which is good. And let's see if we can uh, make a chance here. Class Nash with it. Down the line to Vinicius Jr., who's in some space. Back to Class Nash and El Nene and Serda. And switches it to Trincao, who's got William in the overlap, and he goes down this right-hand side, and can he play in field? Yes, he can. Serdar with it, and Hernandez clears it away. But 
will recycle the play and Amarty plays it forward toward Fernandez, who gets it, Trincao, and to Serdar, through to Fernandez. can he finish, it's a good save from Neuer, he was offside anyway, but that's a first chance of the game, and it was a good one, thrown in by Kimmich to Muller, on this right hand side, he gets past Kolasinac, Kolasinac comes in for a challenge, it's not going to be a foul, that's good, the ball's cleared away to Fernandez, and Vinicius Jr. loses it, and Kimmich finds Lewandowski, back to Kimmich, Vinicius Jr. tracks him back, Muller, Lewandowski, Tolisso with it, out to Alaba, there's so many players forward for Bayern here, Alaba swings the ball into the middle, Muller, Sani, the ball's cleared away just about, and our Sani clears it out, and it's still 2 now. we're just holding on at the moment, the floodgates haven't quite opened yet, corner kick for us, Williams swings it in, Nastasic heads it, and there we go, our first goal of the season, just before half time, here from a free kick, another one of these free kick routines, I've, I've just brought it over from Juventus into the front post and Nastasic heads that and that's a good header across goal, you can see we only have five people in the box there but we found a head on one of them and we're up, well we're not up, we, we, we're up more than we were anyway, <laughs> we're still down to one but we managed to get ourselves back into this game. It doesn't look like we're in the game but that's exactly how we're going to play up against Bayern Munich, you're never expected to dominate the game. But uh, being 2-1 down at half-time, we'll take that. And there's an early highlight for Bayern here. Alaba with it. Puts the ball into the middle. Goretzka and Douglas Costa. And he's tucked that in. And just snatching away any hope we might have had having gone down or, or brought it back to 2-1. Costa gets a goal just after half-time to make it 3-1. And it looks like Bayern are going to win this comfortably. I thought maybe we could have caused a problem, but not quite. No one marking Costa properly there in the box and buying her up 3-1. So we've made a little change. Uh, we've changed the formation. We're to go to the, the three in midfield and, and, and two up front. See if that causes a bit more danger. So Vinicius Junior will partner Fernandez up front. We'll bring on Vasquez for Trincao. Confirm those changes and, and see how that affects the last half an hour of this game. Tolisso hits it from the edge of the box. Why do the goal? Yeah, we'll see how this change affects the game. But uh, as the change has happened, there is a highlight here. The ball's played down the line by Kimmich. Douglas Costa into the middle. It's probably not been successful, that change, you would say. Because within 20 seconds of the change happening, we are now down 4-1. Uh, pretend it wasn't because of the change and we'll, we'll see what happens for the rest of the half an hour. Alaba with it here on their left-hand side. Throws it in towards Sani. Plays it back to Mark Rocca who's come on. Through to Sani. Can he get his hat-trick? Yes, he can. Well done to Leroy Sani getting his hat-trick in his first game of the season here for Bayern Munich. We're, I think, going to go gonna go back to our, our old way. I don't, I don't think the new way is working that well, to be honest. We'll keep Vasquez on up there. Vinicius Jr. is not playing well, so he's going to have to... He's going to have to come off. I think we'll bring on Hog. Hog? We'll go Hog on that left-hand side. Or Hodge. We'll say Hodge. I'm changing it on the fly. Hodge on that right-hand side. And Serdar's dead on his feet as well. So we'll we'll bring on Mascarell, the, the club captain, to play in midfield there. Williams got down this right-hand side into Serdar. And the ball was played into the middle. And it's now cleared away. And the highlight will end. And we're down 5-1 at the moment, which is... Still better than the 8-0 it was in real life, I suppose, but not ideal. Let's see if we can get another one. 5-2 will be a lot more respectable. A lovely play from Fernandez there to William down this right-hand side. He's in acres of space. Can he get the ball into the middle? Yes, he can. And Hogg at the back post. That's what I'm going to go with, Hogg. Hogg at the back post with a, a simple finish. Just a wee tap in at the back post. It was great play from William down this right-hand side. Alba absolutely nowhere near him. He gets past Hernandez as well. Puts it across goal, not with the mistake, and Hogg tucks that into the back post. 50 minutes ago, can we get five or, or another three or four, however it is, however many it is we need to win? It doesn't look like we can. Take off Elneny, bring on Stambouli, why not? As soon as Elneny's a bit dead on his feet there. There's four minutes added time, we're not going to do it, but 5-2 is better than 5-1. I suppose I can't really be surprised, can I, that uh, we, we've lost to, to Bayern Munich in a, the first day of the season. To be fair... We've 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 not embarrassed ourselves too much there. Look at the expected goals. It was only meant to be two point six. Somehow they've scored five. You know what? They were not happy with that. I was going to say put the result aside. It was a pleasing performance. They weren't happy with what I said there. So they know better than me, I suppose. Not a great start. And look at everyone's debut. Martin made his debut there in the cup. I think about seven players made a debut. So the squad's still trying to gel together. 
So um, we'll, we'll give it a few days, a few games, and, and see what happens. But all in all, I'm not too disappointed with that result. I think we'll come back fairly soon, though, uh, just to, to see how we're getting on. Because remember, there's not any European competitions to play in, so it's just the league to talk about. And why not play up against Dortmund in a derby? Like in a West Germany. I'll get the exact name of the derby for that episode, but I know they are our, one of our main rivals. So we'll play against Dortmund. We'll also play against Stuttgart as well and uh, and have two games at the end of October there and see how we get on. So we play against Werder Bremen, uh, Leipzig and Union Berlin between now and then. So hopefully we can at least gather, you know, four, maybe six points between now and then and that will leave us comfortably mid-table, you'd have thought, before a tough game away at uh, Signal Laduna Park to play against Dortmund and then at a home tie against Stuttgart. If you have enjoyed this one, say there's been lots to talk about, lots and lots of signings. Not transfers, not actual buying of players, but loan signings in. I uh, kind of, I see, messing the system up a little bit. But well, if we can play the system, if it's there to be played, we will play it. So if you have enjoyed all the signings I've made, let me know what you think the, the best one's going to be. Personally, I think Vinicius Junior is going to be pretty good. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, and until the next one, where we play against Dortmund and Stuttgart, we'll see you then.